and yes we're back okay <laughs> um, a little bit later than usual because my Facebook live died it wouldn't work for about three hours so a little bit later than normal but here we go welcome to episode 691 and the topic today is waiting for the world to change takes too long there's a better way before I jump into that and explain let me start by saying hi my name is Barry Selby welcome to my daily broadcast on Facebook live um, I will give you links and everything to find me afterwards as well. I am a, I am, I am, what am I? Yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and a passionate champion of the divine feminine, helping women create balance and love, life and business. I'm also, because I'm a passionate champion of the divine feminine, it informs my work with women. It also inspired these talks that started over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart which is abbreviated now to a shorter title, MFTM, so I can make room for more other content for titles. So, today we're episode number 691, and the topic today is waiting for the world, sorry, waiting for the world to come around. Waiting for the world to come around? So I've got a song lyric in my head that's confusing me from what I'm saying. But waiting for the world to do what you need to do is going to take forever. There's a better way. That's what I was trying to say in the title, as, as brilliant as it was. So what I'm talking about is that we as human beings have a tendency to put responsibility for things to happen out there on other people, on the world, society, our employer, employers, our families, our partners, etc., etc. We give them responsibility for a lot of things that we really don't need to, but we do anyway because it's the way the society, the culture is built. This tends to lead to lots of challenges, like betrayal, heartbreak, um, lying, uh, like, um, disloyal, disloyalty, disloyalty. I'm trying to find the right word for that. But always different things that people do because they don't do what you think they're going to do. And 90% of the time, they're not doing what you think they're going to do, and it's not something they were aware they were going to do anyway. But well, we have this programming inside thinking that, oh, well, they'll do certain things so I can expect this behavior. When they don't do it, we then think they're wrong or they're cheating on us or they're transgressing on what we think they should be doing, which is a joke. Well, not, let me say that. It's painful, let's put it that way. But it is a kind of a joke when you look at it from the, um, <laughs> the elevated viewpoint, which is understanding that what we're talking about here is that we give people scripts with no words in it. I live in LA, so it's kind of the Hollywood thing. But if you imagine if you were giving people in your play scripts that had no words in them, they wouldn't know what to say, or how to react, or what to do, or what actions to take. So they basically make it up on the fly, if they're good actors. But you wouldn't know what they're gonna do, so you wouldn't be able to predict that. So therefore, if your relationship partner, for example, doesn't do what you hoped, think, pray they would do, you might get upset with them when they don't even know what you wanted. That isn't fun. And it's also one of the core things about the challenges with my clients is the fact that they've been through that too many times, they're done with it. Which is good for me because I can help them really see more clearly, which I'm going to explain in a moment what that is. But also it can help them heal from the pain from the past. But it expends, it, try that again, it, it extends beyond relationships. Our culture as a whole is largely set up for most people to make assumptions about each other. I know the, the breakdown of assumptions is making an ass out of you and me. Yeah, right. No, enough of that. But in the political arena, for example, we have assumptions about what they're supposed to do. And when they don't do what we think they're going to do because we didn't actually specifically, directly, personally tell them, just to be clear, we get upset. Same thing is true with entertainment stars who don't, who, who cheat on each other or get involved in the Me Too problems. They, they disappoint us because we hold them to a higher standard than they perhaps hide, hold themselves. All of this, all of this is tied to one thing, is that we focus our needs, needs that were intentionally, out there. And that, unfortunately, is an error and approach. The better way that I talked about in the title, the better way I hinted at in the title, is when we become self-reliant, self-referenced. And I'm using those terms, I'll, get, I'll explain what I mean by that. Meaning that when we are out in the world, we know the only thing that we can truly count on is ourselves. But doing it from the place of generosity, not from the place of like, don't trust anybody. But the recognition is that we know that we can respond to anything out in the world 
because we can trust ourselves. Now, that's easier said than done for a lot of people. What I've become very aware of, and again, I work with my clients and talk with friends about it, the sense of betrayal that happens is quite prevalent amongst that particular group of people because they were either promised something that didn't happen or assume something that didn't happen or somehow made up a scenario that wasn't matched by somebody else or by reality outside themselves. Underlying all of that is a feeling of betrayal. And I keep coming back to the reminder that it's only betrayal if we don't, sorry, it only be, it's only betrayal if we do believe everything's gonna work out perfectly out there the way it's supposed to somehow for our good without us having to say a word, which is not true. The world is a random arena of chaos in some ways. And the only way to function effectively in it, I believe, is to stay centered in yourself so you can navigate the chaos from a place of centeredness. Center yourself, center. yeah, you got my point, double centered. <laughs> I've been talking about this a lot and writing about this a lot because I've got a course that I cre I've created that I'm launching actually, um, it's gonna be the weekend after next now, on the 4th of May. There's a new group course called Coming Home to Yourself because it's about coming home to yourself, like the Huddle speaks for itself. Because what I've talked, what I've been realizing, I've been talking about a lot over the last several months, and what I started making notes about is that I teach a lot of things in my courses, and sorry, with my clients, and now in this course, about how to be truly self-supportive, self-supportive, self-reliant, self-caring, self-acknowledging, self-confident, self-accepting. All these different things are tools, or I should say, aspects of a bigger set of tools, which is how do you love yourself enough to live in the world fully, expressing fully, effectively, and successfully so that what happens in the world doesn't impact you. The main thing about this is, is that when stuff in the, hat, in the world goes sideways, you don't go sideways. That's a big change for a lot of people. Because for most people, when the world does go sideways, it's so tempting to go with it and get upset and bent out of shape and frustrated and hurt and worried and everything else. It's not the way to do it. There's a much healthier way, which is learn how to stay centered in yourself. The biggest thing is, it's almost um, an analogy. I uh, always seem to have think about doing analogies every so often. But one of the analogies is basically that if living in California, we do have occasional earthquakes. Not, very, not big ones for a while, but we've had them every, every so often. The thing about earthquakes is the things that are impacted by earthquakes are things that are rigidly attached to the ground, which is that thing about when things are sideways, you go sideways. If you're rigidly attached to the ground during an earthquake, you tend to find yourself being bounced around by it. The things that are more fluid and flexible. For example, a building, especially like with the Northridge quake, a lot of buildings that were rigid, structured on the ground, basically collapsed from the shaking that was happening. But cars that were driving along the street outside, there was barely any damage because the cars were moving. They were flexible relative to the ground. I'm double, I think that's true, by the way. <laughs> There's an analogy I'm using, but I think, it's, I think it's true. So this is what I mean. When you are self-oriented and self-referenced, by really supporting yourself, caring about yourself, and trusting who you are, you become like a car that's moving on a road that isn't, that's being hit by um, vibration or by shaking like an earthquake. And I don't mean the road splitting. I'm not, going, I'm not going that far down the path of that. But the thing is, when you're, in a, when you're in a vehicle that's not, that's actually moving, because of the fact it's not tied to the ground, it's not being affected by the earthquake, when you're not invested in what's happening out there as much, you're not impacted by what happens out there. And that's a huge shift for a lot of people. Because maybe not you, but somebody you know, I'm suspecting, does in fact seem to be caught up in the outside world like a ping pong ball being bounced around or like a, um, oh, what are those things? Pinball machine. Like being a pinball and pinball machine, bouncing around and being bounced around all over the place by everything around them. When you really are centered, you don't have to move around like that. You have freedom to do what you want. And the course I talked about, I'll, I'll leave a link in the comments so you can contact me to find out more about it. I believe is the key to freedom, to gain control, gain access to really knowing yourself as a fully um, self-referenced, powerful being. If it appeals to you, again, I'll put the link in the comments. Please reach out to me and ask me about it. I'll tell you. I'll, say, I'll, I'll email you the information because it's it's a cool course. It really is simply this key that I want to mention to you. When you remember that you are deserving, worthy, and powerful yourself the sooner the world becomes referenced to you, not the other way around. 
and that's when whatever the world's supposed to do you don't really worry about you take care of yourself and you live in a healthy holistic powerful way it really is that simple a switch now getting there that takes some effort that's why i've got the course created for that purpose but getting there is easier if you know what you're looking for and how to do it i think that's really it i was going to go live at 5 p.m but my facebook live jammed up it wasn't working i did everything i could to get it going it finally came back on about 15 minutes ago yeah about 15 minutes ago so i'm doing a late live tonight but normally i am going live at 5 p.m pacific time <laughs> Um, but I think I've got everything I need to say out of the way because it was really fresh at 5 p.m. It's a bit less fresh now. My apologies. So this made some sense to you. and hope it's been of value to you. Um, if you have any questions or thoughts or comments, please put them below and let me know. And again, I'll put a link in the comments for a contact form so you can reach out to me and find out about the coursework because I'm very happy about it. Yes, I'm very uh, braggadocious about it because I know what it is and it's powerful. It's, it's immersive. It's, it's, yeah, very highly practical, practical, practicable, highly practical. So with that, um, quickly telling you, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this at 5 p.m. Pacific time, usually, just later tonight because of the Facebook Live glitch. And you can watch them, my replays on my business page or on YouTube, so I'll give you the place you can find them. So my main personal page on Facebook is Barry Selby. You can find me there every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, although this week I've got a couple of interviews, so I might be moving them around, but I'll let you know ahead of time. Replays are on my business page, which is barryselby.author, facebook.com forward slash barryselby.author. And also on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to that. All my social media is my name, so you find me there. And the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. I think that's it. If you have any questions, thoughts, please put them below. And when I respond, I'm going to sign off. I do appreciate you watching and sharing with anybody you think might get value from this. And again, I'll leave a link in the comments. Please contact me, and I'll tell you how to get into this course and get started to learn how to really take ownership of your own space. Hi, Mary. Will the YouTube be ready for tonight? So will the YouTube be ready for tonight now? I'm just, this is my Facebook Live live now, literally right now. So I've got to post it. So it'll be about another half an hour now before I get there. But it will be up tonight, yes. Um, I hope that answers your question. So yeah, so thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me. And I will be back again tomorrow, I think at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I'm trying to remember. Thursday, I've got an interview, so I'll be late then. Tomorrow, I believe, oh yeah. I might, go, I might be going to 6 again tomorrow, so you're intrigued to hear about the, 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 the course. Okay. Again, I'll, I'll put a link in the comments as a contact form. You can, re you can reach out to me because then I can get your email address and I'll send you the information. So, Mary, I'd love to send it to you because you might find this very aligned and valuable to you. So thanks for, for letting you know, let me know. Um, sounds good. All right. So, again, thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific. No, excuse me. Probably going to 6 p.m. Pacific. I've got another. I've got another uh, video thing going at 5 p.m. It's going to be a busy week, but I appreciate you being with me as always, and I will see you again tomorrow at some point. <laughs> Hopefully, it won't be a glitch tomorrow. And uh, take care of yourselves. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.